Rock said the PDA is the statutory and constitutional tool that the state has given you as a community. In 1981, the state enacted basically the enabling legislation that allowed all cities in Georgia to create a DDA if they so chose to do it. And within that code, they spell out the methodology in which it will be created. In 1986, when we started the downtown Main Street program, that program was not directly affiliated with the DDA. The DDA existed. And back in the late years of the Reagan administration, there were changes in the federal tax laws that allowed banks to pass loans through and receive an advantage, if you will, a tax deferment or a tax-free situation on revenues that they gained from the loans that were made within a DDA area. So there was a financial functionality as to why DDAs were created and why they were. In 1992, there were changes to the Downtown Development Authority's law with terms. Originally, they had six years terms, and they realized that people basically burned out after six years, and they put them at four-year terms. There were also some other modifications, and one in particular was that the state of Georgia felt like if you were going to, if the mayor and council were going to put people on a DDA, those people need to have some kind of training, just as today, Perry would validate that city and county officials have to go through training. And that was a good thing. And by that time, by 1995, I moved from Tipton after about nine years there, and I went to work at GMA, and we created, along with the Fannin Institute, the first training for the state of Georgia for the Downtown Development Authority. And mayors and councils and elected officials would come in and sit for eight hours and go through that training. And to this day, GMA still sponsors that training. So it's an intensive training. We're going to only talk for a few minutes tonight, but trust me, if you want to talk about downtown development, the issues, the success, the mechanics of how it works, you can spend a good bit of time. So let me paint a picture for you, going back to Tipton for a moment. Not only was that downtown rotting to the core, you can't say it any other way, and there was incredible disinvestment, and we went back and started studying the tax base, and it was straight lining. Its economic EKG was a straight line. If they take you to the Hayhara or Bellasa Hospital, and you're straight lining, what do you hope they do? No, if you're straight lining, you hope they get the paddles out and pop them to you so that your heart starts swapping. And I'm going to speak anecdotally, but I want you to understand this. A downtown revitalization program represents the paddles, and the DDA is a part of the functionality, the coded, supported functionality, an organization, if you will, that can help a downtown come back. And I can see your faces, and I can read your minds, you're saying, but we don't have creeping slum and blight. Want to get in the car and go with me? And what did Walter just show us? That building was suffering. It was beginning to decline significantly in a few more years, and it wouldn't even be here as a part of your heritage and your economic opportunity, if you will. So back to Tipton. Going up Tipton Avenue, which is 125, going up 41, you get here and go into Tipton on 41. Years ago, 30 years ago, there was disinvestment and abandonment for blocks and blocks and blocks out away from that downtown. You can go over to Albany. If you've ever been to Albany, a tornado in 1948, I believe it was, wiped out about half the city of Albany. They have been struggling ever since that day. And I'm going to lay this one on you. Speaking of, why would you want a DDA? You've been so blessed not to have a catastrophic disaster in downtown Bay Highland. But if you go to Greensboro, Georgia, the county seat of Greene County, they had a tornado. But luckily, they had a DDA that was in place that worked very quickly after that tornado hit. If you go up to Fort Valley, Georgia, in the 1970s, a tornado wiped out about a third of the city of Fort Valley. And then we can start talking fire. When fires come in and take out a block or two of the downtown, as a community, you need that organizational structure that can help the city get in there and focus on that core area that, due to natural causes, either storm or fire, you've suffered a tremendous loss at the personal level, at the public level, and at the tax base level. So I just bring those elements up to tell you there's, there's a great deal of reasoning behind that, and I know that um, we can certainly address specific issues about residential property and things like that. It is not uncommon in most of our historic small towns and downtowns that you don't go two blocks from the courthouse and you have the first big houses in the town. 
That's just the way the towns grew. And in many towns, people still live in those houses. Sometimes it's a funeral home. Sometimes it's a law office. So when you start to create a PDA area, it's important to understand in its broadest perspective what the uh, Central Business District really is. But as two former managers and one current manager, I'll tell you, you need to make sure that it is concise enough that it's manageable in the first years of whatever that downtown program is going to be called to be focused on it. So that's another thing um, that you'll want to think about, is where you put your boundaries and why do you put them there. Um, one other thing I want to share with you, I saw the questions about how will, will you know, the issue of taxes in a district, and I think the attorney handled that very well. Um, but I want to talk about the positive impact of a healthy downtown in all of those properties, not only that surround the downtown, but that reach out to the very edge of the city limits. When your downtown core begins to deteriorate and go back to that straight line tax base, you don't want it to do that. When I was at GMA, we studied three cities, Rome, Milledgeville, and Tiffin. We went back 20 years and pulled the tax base and analyzed it and said, what was going on in these downtowns before an organized, <coughs> almost always, DDA-centric uh, downtown revitalization program was started? And it wasn't. It was either straight lining or it was declining. It was the tax base, the value, not the village, but the value of the property. And not only was it doing it in that downtown, it was doing it in the area in the residential property around the downtown. And there have been some subsequent studies that show that even more so. But the good news is with the downtown program and the DEA as the core and some kind of management, you heard us mention that we were, we are, she is, and I was a downtown manager. We worked full time, night and day, doing nothing but concentrating on how to get investment and economic redevelopment going in that downtown. So I share that with you that um, fear not, ask questions, have the dialogue, but don't be afraid of this. I've spent 30-something years of my life watching what this can do for communities, and it uplifts them. Today, you can't make this up. I walked through the second res restoration of the Mayan Hotel, which is the City Hall in Tipton, if you've ever been up there. They just spent about a million dollars redoing it after 30 years to bring it back up again. But when I moved to Tifton, the city hall was in this tiny little building that was kind of like the Trailways bus station. And you can't make it up. And nobody would take a friend or a relative who came to visit that community to see the downtown. It was in such deplorable condition. And as that downtown program grew, we not only had local folks that would bring their kin people at the holidays, we had tour buses and she has tour buses to come. And how close are y'all to I-75? I thought so. Um, you're real close. And so you've got this wonderful town that if you trust the city council to do the right thing and you as citizens have input and involvement in it because they can't do it by themselves, you can see great things come to Heihara in the, in the years to come. And so, uh, again, I wish you the very best, and, and I can answer even more specific questions if you want me to later. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Pierre Hyde.